Alright, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make some checkpoints for an obby that save whenever the player leaves and joins, uh, so they can progress through your obby, leave the game, and then when they join back, they're in the same place they were before. So, how we're going to start doing this is we're going to make a folder in the workspace, and we're going to call it checkpoints. So, if you make a folder in the workspace, and then change its name, checkpoints, and now in that checkpoints folder, insert a part. And now we can change how that part looks, so if you make it a bit bigger, make it thinner, and then we can make it anchored and turn off can collide. And now I'm just going to make it neon and make it maybe green. And then what I'm going to do is change the name of this part to 0, and then I'm going to make another one. Change the name of this part to 1, and then etc, etc. Just make more parts and change the name, uh, change the name to the number of the stage. So, 0, 1, 2, 3. And now, in server script service, I'm going to make a script. And then I'm going to call the script checkpoint script. And now at the top of this script here, we're going to define a variable called data store service, which is going to be used to save and restore the player's data. So, local data store service equals game colon get service, error brackets and quotation marks, data store service. And now we need to get the data store itself, so local data uh, stage store, that equal to data store service, I'll get data store, and pair of brackets and quotation marks, I'm just going to call that player stage data store. You can call that anything you like, but I'm just going to call it that for simplicity. So, now we need an event that fires every time the player joins the game, so if we do game.players.player added, on connect function and then player and then open up that function and now we need to create a leader stats folder which will be the leaderboard in the top right so the way we can do that is local leader stats equals instance.new folder and then leader stats name equals leader stats it needs to be exactly this it can't be anything else or else Roblox won't understand and then leader stats dot parent equals player. And now we're going to need to make the stage itself. So local stage equals instance dot new int value. And then stage dot name is stage and stage dot parent equals leader stats. So this is putting it in the leader stats folder so it will appear on the leaderboard. So now we need to get the data. So we need to see if it's been saved before. Uh, we need to get that data back. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a pcall function which catches errors. So, the way we can do that is local success colon error message equals pcall function and then open up the function. And now in here we can do stage.value equals stage store colon get async and then the key which we can set to the player's user ID, so player.user ID. So each player should have a unique key for the data store. And now we're going to say if success, then print successfully dot, and then we want dot dot player dot name stage data. But we want to say then else. So if it wasn't successful, we want to warn this error message. So what this is doing is when the player joins the game. It makes a leader stats folder for the leaderboard in their player itself and then a stage value in that leader stats folder and then it tries to get the player's previous data from the stage store and if it's successful it says successfully got their data and it sets it the stage value to that data but if it wasn't successful it warns the error message but now we need to make the player's data save when they leave the game so now we need an event that fires every time the player leaves the game. The way we can do that is another event. So game dot players dot player removing on connect function, and then we're taking the player again. Now this time we're going to do local success on error message again equals pcall function. So another pcall, and then this time we're going to do stage store colon set async so we're setting the data this time so the player's key we need first and then the value so the key is again the player's user id so player.user id 
and then a comma, and then the value that we're setting it to. So, all we're going to do now, put here, is player.leadstats.stage.value. So the player's stage. So now, we can do if success, then print successfully saved, and then again, dot dot player dot name dot dot stage data oh sorry i put the wrong thing in there player there we go i spelled correctly and now we can do else so if it wasn't successful then warn the error error message so now if we join the game we can see that it says successfully got scored into stage data and i'm on stage zero uh and now if i stop the game we can now make it so when you step on the checkpoint it gives you a new stage and then we're also going to make it teleport your character to the correct stage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through each of these checkpoints and say when they're touched, if the player's stage is less than that stage, then this is the player's new stage. So what we're going to do is put underscore comma checkpoint in pairs game dot workspace dot checkpoints on get children do. And then checkpoint dot touch colon connect function. And then in the pair brackets we're going to take hits or whatever's hit it. And then open up that function. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say if whatever's touched it is a player. So the way we can work that out is say if hit dot parent colon find first child humanoid. So if it's a player basically, then the player, well, we're going to make a player variable, so local player equals game dot players. We'll get to player from character, and then the character is the hit hit's parent, so hit dot parent. Right, so now we need to check if the player's stage is less than this checkpoint. Right, so we're going to make a variable this time called checkpoint number. So okay, checkpoint number, so that's equal to two number checkpoint dot name. So, what this is doing, it's getting the uh, name of this checkpoint, and it's converting it to a number, so it's saying, so that's why each one's a number, basically. So now what we're going to do, is we're going to say, if player.leaderstats.stage.value is less than checkpoint number, then player.leaderstats.stage.value equals checkpoint number. So, if the player isn't on this stage yet, the player is now on this stage. But currently, the player can touch it and it'll change their stage, but the player doesn't actually spawn at their stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the top of the script and we're going to make a function to teleport the player to their stage. So, I'm going to make a function and call it player to stage and a pair of brackets and we're going to take the player as an argument. And then in this function, what I'm going to do is say local stage part equals game dot workspace dot checkpoints colon find first child and two string player dot leader stats dot stage dot value so what this is doing is finding the checkpoint part in this checkpoints folder that is what the current is the player's checkpoint value in their leader stats folder is currently so now we can make the player move to the stage part so the way we do that is player dot character dot humanoid root part dot c frame equals stage part dot c frame plus vector three dot new and zero comma two point five comma zero. What this is doing is moving the players the players characters humanoid root part to two point five studs higher than the checkpoint. And then now we've got this function to move the player to their stage. We can say uh, here, so after it's done this, if the player already has a character, so if this has been a bit slow and the player's character is already loaded, so if player.character, then player to stage, player, well if there isn't a character then we don't want it to do it yet. And then we want an event that fires every time there's a new character. So how we can do that is player.characteradded, we'll connect, function, and then open up that function, and then we're just going to say play to stage, player. But again, we want to make sure that it's waiting until the player has a humanoid root pop before it's trying to teleport them. So, what I forgot to do 
is in the top of this function play to stage we're going to say repeat wait and then pair of brackets until player dot character dot humanoid group part now if we play the game again this time teleports me to stage one and then I can get up to stage two and then I can reset my character and I'll be back at stage two and then I can go again to stage three reset my character and I'll be at stage three but then I can leave the game and then I can load back into the game as you can see it says successfully saved Squidings', Squidings save data and then if I play the game again you'll see that when it loads I'm still on stage three and it still takes me to stage three so that was how you can make a stage script uh, with data saving in Roblox Studio. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.